This video covers the first in a series of texturing for prosthetic sculpts and in this one we'll take a look at uh, creating some natural skin textures. Uh, now this is the final sculpt with texture and I've tried to cram in as many of the commonly needed skin textures uh, in this one sculpt um, as many as I can and there are pores, wrinkles, folds and raised goosebumps. These textures could of course be amplified or reduced by using a heavier or a lighter touch depending on the effect you need. Now it's worth pointing out that obviously texturing needs to happen after the form is there. You can't text your way to a good form. Um, if the sculpt's not right, if the shape isn't right, then you need to change the, the, the sculpt until the form is correct, uh, until they work. You can't really start texturing. You want to think of texturing like a wallpaper. Um, you need to put wallpaper up onto good flat walls. If the walls aren't flat, they're not straight and they're not level, then neither will it be all expensive lovely wallpaper be so you have to get that groundwork done first before you start texturing. As such I want to start by quickly showing you how I blocked out this form onto the core. Um, now I'm sculpting onto a urethane resin cast um, and this is part of a face, a side of a face. It was a life cast that was cleaned up uh, and I've smoothed it out and modified it to get rid of as many undercuts as possible and they include little things like the join between the lips the nostrils and the eyelids those things uh, can cause little undercuts eyelids particularly um, they often have little overhangs due to the weight of the material on the face during life casting so uh, they need, uh, it's good to get rid of those now I start by adding small blobs of plastiline um, the plastiline I'm using here is a grey uh, plastiline from a company called Jacobson's Chemicals in uh, England and they get the stuff, I think it's a French plastiline uh, and this is uh, a softness, um, uh, the 50 softness, they do different grades of softness and they're numbered and this is 50 which is quite a nice soft uh, grade. Now I like rolling each one of these um, lumps these little blobs into a kind of a sausage shape and then pressing it in place uh, flattening it as I go generally uh, and this gradually builds up uh, into the rough shapes that you want and then I can blend these blobs together using sculpting tools usually I start with a flat wooden tool uh, and sometimes a twisted metal loop tool like this now this makes these individual blobs that I put on to create the initial form it turns them into a, a single complete shape um, and the texture of the tool marks that you can see, they can be smoothed out with a finer tool, like another loop tool made with a guitar string. Although I would say, uh, as you'll see as we do the texturing, uh, it really doesn't need to be perfectly smooth before you start texturing. And it's worth just pointing out as well that the texturing can look just plain wrong when you start. Um, as your smooth blank surface starts having these little dents or scoops put into it it can just look like you're ruining a very nice smooth surface and I call this fear that the blank canvas syndrome uh, and it just looks like um, all these isolated dents in an otherwise perfect surface that, that are wrong um, even if they're right they still look wrong so you need to have faith and keep at it because soon there'll be lots and lots of little dents and the more that you cover the more they'll look like they're supposed to be there so I'm dragging the tool over over the little wrinkles and folds uh, just to kind of help blend them together. And I really like this tool. This is just a twisted brass uh, a piece of uh, rod that's square section. And once it's twisted, it makes this very nice kind of texture of lines. And also pressing down sometimes helps here uh, and using you know a brush. So I'm going to carve in some initial sort of folds and wrinkles using a little loop tool. This tool is actually made from um, uh, an acupuncture needle that's been bent into a little hook. Uh, and again, you can start using this to kind of carve little loops. I'm starting on the chin. I'm just literally carving out tiny little uh, scoops like this in a, in a pattern. And I'm following the lines of where the pores would be. It's very important to look at the directions of the pores on the skin because they do change direction on the face. Um, if you look at uh, you know reference pictures of old skin, they're very they're a lot more obvious. So you can see quite clearly where they are. Um, and then as I get around sort of corners and stuff, you start dragging them together to make sort of slightly longer lines. Um, so they start creating, you know, pores that join up almost. And around the neck, I'm going to be doing something funky with this uh, later on. So I'm, I'm just putting in these little lines here. Um, I'm switching to a slightly wider wire tool now just to make slightly bigger pores. These are a bit more sort of blunt, kind of uh, bigger, obvious pores on the cheek. Um, and it's nice to kind of vary the size of the uh, of the pores and they're not all the same because pores aren't. The other thing is to use like a sponge, like this uh, reticulated sponge. It's quite nice to drag over the form because it softens it off and it just kind of reduces everything slightly. So you get a much more kind of um, 
natural look. They look like they're in the material rather than you've carved them in. Um, same with the wrinkles as well. We're going to do some some nice sort of wrinkles around the eyes and stuff. Uh, this loop tool is quite a large kind of loop tool, it's quite thick wire, but it's very good for these early stages where I'm just kind of carving in and rounding off. And very often with wrinkles, what I'll do is I'll establish where the wrinkle is and then just knock the edges off with uh, with the with the loop tool like this, just kind of rounding it off. And a lighter and lighter touch will just kind of take off less material each time. So you don't need a tiny, tiny sculpting tool for some of this stuff. You just need to be very gentle with with uh, with you know just a normal size uh, loop tool. I have switched here just because I like to switch tools constantly, just to show you how they all work. Um, but uh, I have a habit sort of fidgeting and changing from tool to tool, uh, depending on my want. So uh, I will be changing tools quite regularly on this, but that's more just the way I work rather than out of necessity. Um, and just kind of carving these little edges off like this, just knocking off the edges, just to round them off. Um, to make them less obvious and the other thing you can do is drag the tool like this across the, the lines and the wrinkles to reduce them and again you know you're going with a sponge or something just to knock it all back and press it down uh, to sort of uh, put some finer lines in here I'm going to use this little loop tool uh, again this is the uh, the um, acupuncture needle tool uh, through plastic and then that basically just creates these little thin lines and by varying the pressure you can create different thicknesses. Now I found that this was looking a little bit sort of samey to me so I want to go in and just carve little bits out here and there uh, to create some variation in the depth between the wrinkles so it's not just a flat surface with lines on it um, there's actually going to be you know a variation of of uh, depths here so on one side of this l uh, wrinkle here I've just carved out a little bit and I'm just going to soften that off again using this tool. This is the other end of that acupuncture needle tool. So the wire is from an acupuncture um, needles. You can just buy those online in packs of sort of like a hundred. Um, and I bought the smallest I could find. And I basically bent one into a loop like this and the other into a sort of a point. So that I can kind of do two different kinds of things with the same tool. Uh, and it's quite nice to kind of go in and just feed off of the lines that are already there and then sort of pick up them with this little loop tool and just kind of round them off as I go. So I'm kind of lift, I'm digging it in and lifting it up slightly so you create a, a natural kind of rounded edge and again you can kind of finish that off with a, a sponge like this which just takes the edges off and blends the stuff together a little bit uh, so you can sort of um, create a much more natural finish. I'm working on the inside of the eye bags here just kind of drawing in some lines with another loop tool again through a piece of plastic. By putting plastic on you reduce the sharpness of the line so you end up with a much more natural rounded kind of effect as you dig in. Uh, moving back onto the cheek, uh, doing a lot of sort of uh, dents with this tool just kind of like a little machine gun or sewing needle you know just kind of did it just kind of you get into a rhythm of doing it bam, 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 with a needle tip and just pressing it regularly. It looks like these things are going to take a long time but actually the more you do them the kind of quicker you get and it doesn't really take that long to do and here by moving the lamp you can kind of see the uh, the, the, the effect of the of the different wrinkles in there. Um, using that sponge through plastic uh, again you can kind of get some texture um, and it's a nice nondescript texture you can get different grades of this um, sponge as well if you look up uh, reticulated sponge you should find some sheet foam suppliers that supply foam for upholstery and things like that. They often carry this kind of foam. Um, you may have to buy it in a, in a sheet the size of a small mattress, um, but it means you'll never need to buy a sponge again because uh, it'll keep you going. And as you can see, the before and after here, there's two different kinds of plastic. So the thinner plastic creates a much more sort of um, obvious mark. The other thing I'm using here is some uh, clay shaper tools. Uh, and they're great. I mean, you can buy different grades of tool, uh, different uh, grades of silicon. These are the sort of grey tip, um, and they're quite uh, firm, uh, and they're in, available in different sizes. And I bought the smallest I could find, which were great for prosthetics. Um, and again, you can use them by themselves or through plastic, and it gives you this nice kind of um, realistic sort of dented effect, um, where you can kind of, you know, get some nice sort of pore texture. Um, this tool here is a little rake tool that I made and it's basically strips of piano wire that are held in a brass handle and again working through plastic um, it's it's a nice easy thing to do because you just drag it lightly across and you can vary the pressure and the angle and everything and just do repeated strokes over and over and over through the plastic and each time the marks that you leave they're slightly rounded and they sort of 
merging with the previous ones and you end up with a reasonably natural looking series of wrinkles which um, you know again you can kind of buff them down burnish them with a little bit of sponge and you get a reasonably nice finish quite quickly as well which is nice and it gives you something to work from you can start working into those lines if you want with some more uh, you know sculpting textures so here I'm going to kind of beef some of these up by sort of carving in some lines some establishing some wrinkles um, this is a little loop tool here um, and just kind of you know carve where the line is and then my habit is then to sort of quickly soften them off by just knocking the edges off of the loop tool and again to avoid that kind of series of lines in a flat plane I, I'm putting some sausages of clay at regular intervals here to kind of undulate the surface so I'm putting those in and blending them in in addition to the wrinkle that we've carved in you've got a nice sort of natural variation of, of form which has created the wrinkles um, and uh, it gives you a nice sort of uh, surface that you can then texture so by putting those blobs in and then just merging them I've, I've put a nice surface so I can start dragging this uh, this rake tool across um, over the surface and I've repeated the the texture I did before but this time that texture is on a little bit more form there's a bit more sort of uh, fold you know weight above and below the wrinkles to give it a bit more kind of natural sort of uh, weight to it all because obviously wrinkles need to be there because two you know um, masses of skin are meeting with the, when the, the skin is compressed usually when the brow is raised so it's good to put that weight that meat in between those wrinkles by adding little sausages um, this is by the side of the face on the neck and by the ear um, and again I've just kind of carved very quickly sort of roughly parallel lines that criss cross over each other and you can kind of smooth those over uh, again with either sponges and tools uh, and this rake again which I showed you a nice close-up of that just so you can see how the the rake the, the ends are bent over because I find that helps um, give a, a better line because it's sort of pressing downwards and it just kind of helps uh, with the dragging sort of motion when you're pulling them across uh, and it gives you again a nice variation by crisscrossing the line slightly you see you get a reasonably natural and again quite quickly little massive lines and then over the top of that I'm going to do some little pores through plastic so you're kind of layering your texture so you start off with folds and lines and then you can put the pores and the dots and things over the top of that so um, by layering the textures you kind of again help create a, a reasonably natural uh, effect that's merging all together So going in again around the cheek, and I, I keep switching places on the face just so I don't get bored. I kind of work on on the cheek, around the eye, again using a little needle sort of pointed tool here through plastic to create some lines and some wrinkles. And by merging the pores into the wrinkles, so the, the pores become a little bit longer. They can blend in quite nicely. This is close up with the clay shape tool again. Um, I've got a couple of different shapes here. This one's a pointed one. It's more like a sort of a pencil shape. Um, which is quite nice. You can draw lines in it, and by pressing and, and dragging across, you can get dots or wrinkles or lines. Um, and then here, I'm folding the plastic over on itself to double the thickness, which reduces the effect of any tool, so it softens each line even more. And this is the other. That was a chisel tip, um, you know, tool, and that it creates a slightly different kind of effect. A lot of this is just playing around. There isn't a very prescriptive use this tool for that effect. It's it's just having a play with it and see what you like and how you like the feel of it. This is a needle uh, that sat in a pin vise, what's known as a pin vise. Uh, you could just stick a needle into like a, a big biro refill, you know, take the, the refill out and just use the handle. And then uh, it's just a way of holding a pin, basically. And what I'm doing here, this is for the port, the, the, um, the goose flesh, uh, the goose bumps under the, under the chin. Um, by, by sticking the needle in at an angle and then dragging it up slightly, um, you kind of see that you raise uh, a little portion of the, the sculpt. Uh, I'm doing it in slow motion here just so you can kind of see that it goes in it displaces the material slightly so it gives a raised bump and then you kind of give a little flick just as you pull out and it gives you a little um, you know a little dink of, bing of just some plastiline that sticks up and that will be something we use in a second so by doing a series of these you can create some very natural sort of um, sort of bumps on the neck or wherever you need to have sort of raised goose bumps so once I've done those, I need to make a slip. So I'm going to use these, which is a surf form. Uh, it's basically like a little cheese grater with some lighter fluid. And what I'm going to do is use this, the blade of this to scrape some of the plastiline and make little blobs like this. 
which I can then add this lighter fluid to, this naphtha-based lighter fluid. Um, obviously it's very flammable, this stuff, so don't do it any near any naked flames or don't be smoking while you're doing that. Just cover it with this stuff and then just leave it to, for 10 minutes and mix it in with a brush until it becomes uh, a slip, like a liquid. And it's basically like a liquid plastiline and you can brush that onto your surface. If you brush into uh, your holes that you've made with a needle, the, the slip fills the holes and it creates this sort of raised bump texture. Because all the uh, texture we've done so far has been, you know, incised, indented, and this actually gives you a nice bump. We'll let that evaporate for a while, uh, sort of 20 minutes, and we'll come back to that. The um, the lips, I'm just going to finish off the lips. I wanted to build a bit more form on the lips. Um, so by sort of, you know, building and shaping with the little blobs, uh, I can create some, some skin around the lips, because I've avoided those so far. Um, I'm putting a nice big sort of line underneath, and then again, putting some meat either side of that line, so that that line marks where the wrinkle is and then we kind of create the reason for that wrinkle by putting the skin either side of it as uh, so you put a blob in there and then just smooth it out and that, that's basically the essence of sculpting really is to sort of put the blob in the right place and smooth the edges out and if you can do that perfectly and know where everything goes then you know you can sculpt well so um, it's, it's funny with with clay you sort of move things around until you're happy it's never um, something you're happy with instantly um, here I'm just carving in some lines. I want to get some different textures on the chin. I want to just have some raised areas. So I, I create a series of crisscross bumps. And you, you can see they just look like what they are. They're just little grooves. And then in between I've created little islands of plastiline. I'm going to punch some of these up by putting a blob of plastiline on. So I've created some recessed areas and some raised areas. And then by sort of pressing them down just to help them stick and to flatten them slightly and then just dragging the tool over, you sort of drag the material from the blob that's next to it lightly over and it just kind of helps smooth it out just a little bit uh, so that when you go in with your sponge you get a reasonably nice natural sort of finish so there's we've got some nice, uh, it's not really texture, that's you know sort of secondary form slightly, we'll come back and texture that a bit more later um, but once I've done that chin I'm going to move on to the lips so I'm just going to sort of create some uh, wrinkles on the lips which a lot of people are asking about, uh, lip wrinkles. Um, so basically I've sort of established some sort of major lines that go sort of directly across the lip like this, go down, and then in between those lines, putting a little blob in and just blending those out again, because by, by adding blobs and blending them out again, you get that nice undulation. And if it's slightly too much and you feel that you've added too much, you can always reduce it. Uh, but it's good to at least just put them in, because then you start creating... Uh, a more realistic shape from the start um, and again putting blobs on then just blending the edges out um, and with the lips here what I'm doing is I'm basically carving in a line and then just again blending it because sometimes on some people's lips you do get a little ridge ever so slightly it's, it's more in some than others but it's nice to put it in again if it's too much you can always reduce it but just by establishing it you kind of can see where it is and putting these kind of uh, these crisscross lines across the kind of smokers lines that you get on lips often that dig into the lips it's easy to do these too heavily uh, so you know sort of put them in and then round the edges off and if they look too much you can just kind of keep dragging the tool across the lines until you know you, you blend it out which is what I do here I tend to do this a lot I put lines in too heavily but where I want them and then I just keep reducing them and reducing them and softening them off until they're almost not there but by sort of putting them in too heavily in the first place, at least I know where they are and what they're trying to do, and then I can kind of step back from it. So you sort of arrive at the desired level of texture. You don't sort of start out and it happen instantly. Often you, you by process, you do it too heavily and then you soften it, and I find that way is easier sometimes. Uh, so here, working into those, those larger forms by creating some, some smaller forms through plastic, here I folded it over it, itself a couple of times to really soften off the effect of the of the tools that I'm putting in over the top so I started off with a, a wooden tool and I, I go down to this tiny little um, uh, loop tool and then a little bit of that silicon tool and it gives me a nice variety of textures and, and pores um, and again once I've got those I'm kind of dig into the lips to make those little uh, tiny little folds you get on lips Lips are, 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 you know, they move a lot. They stretch and they contract and they, they form, you know, the mouth is used to form letters and words and things and it smokes and it eats and everything. So they get a lot of wrinkles on there. Um, so it's nice to put lots of little fine lines in. 
So with the face, what I've got here is I'm just using a blow dryer just to heat the surface of the face. Plastiline is very responsive to heat. When it's warm, it softens. Just think of it as a wax. So when it's warm, it goes very soft. So by heating it gently, I can put these pores in. You can kind of see how when I press the tool in, it slightly raises the plastiline either side. I'm doing this slowing down thing again, just so you can kind of see how it displaces and pushes and affects the, the pore that's directly next to it as if it pulls on the plastic it helps sort of smooth it out ever so slightly so you, you can kind of press in through this warmed plastic and you get a very pleasing effect very kind of hard little pore and again depending on the size of the tool you're using will dictate how big the pore is whether they're very very tiny little pinheads or if they're more like acne scarring where they tend to be a bit bigger a bit more sort of pockmarky uh, and again by dragging the tool through this warm plastic you can kind of see how it it pushes against the plastiline. So you push in with the tool and the, the plastiline rises up either side of the tool slightly. So doing these little lines creates these nice little effects where you kind of dig in and it kind of pushes things around a bit. And you can actually be quite bold with this. You can kind of dig in really quite firmly like I am here and just create a little bit of line. Uh, and you'll see all of this is a lot more sort of easier to see because of the lamp. I've got, I, I use a lamp all the time. It's very important to have a lamp if you can to give you some strong directional lighting when you're sculpting, um, particularly textures, because by throwing light harshly across the surface at an angle that you can control, it's much easier to see your texture, your form, um, than if you've got head-on lighting. Because if, if everything's evenly illuminated from above, then you can't really see everything. You need you need that sort of contrast. Um, and it's particularly good for sort of, like I say, fine texture and detail. Here on the lips, doing the same thing as before, just kind of building in and uh, pushing and displacing through plastic with my little tool. Uh, and it occurred to me that there wasn't enough sort of form in the lip. You know, form can be very small. Um, there's a fine line between tiny, tiny form and texture, but essentially, you know, form is the kind of the big clumsy stuff you dig in with tools like this. And the texture tends to be gentle and fine over the top. And having textured this lip, I decided it needed something a bit more drastic. So I, I went in there and dug a, a little scoop out and pushed it around through the plastic. And actually, by pushing down on this plastic, I got an accidental effect here, which I was quite pleased with. So I, I kind of worked into that a little bit, but I kept that as it was. Um, just because I liked the way that the skin looked like it sort of sagged and folded slightly on the lip. Um, it's a little happy accident. Um, and that happens a lot with sculpting. If you're careful, you just sort of create things accidentally. Uh, this is alcohol, just 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol that I've sprayed on the surface. And I'm using a, a coarse brush that's been cut down. And by smoothing that out with a brush, it just helps soften off the texture slightly. Um, going back to this uh, neck piece here where we did the pores um, and the bumps under here, I'm just blending these out because I wasn't happy with how they they sort of blended it almost like they stopped too suddenly so by using the slip again and a tiny brush I can add to those um, needle pointed bumps that I created uh, just by dotting on with a small brush um, little bumps like this and again you can put them anywhere you can put them if you were doing like disease or something you wanted some tiny tiny little bumps uh, it's quite handy to do that but by sort of selecting you know putting them in selected places you just give a slight variety of texture I'm putting a few around eyes you often see these like Plaque sort of deposits around eyes and stuff on older people, uh, and you can even flick the stuff. You see, I'm using a wooden tool to flick the brush back uh, so that the stuff pings onto the surface, and it it gives you a very nice random texture. A lot of this is uh, the solvent. This it looks like I'm going on quite heavily, but what happens is the naphtha that's on there, the lighter fluid, will evaporate. So the actual volume of each tiny little blob will reduce slightly as it evaporates. So in an hour's time, this will look a lot sort of finer um, and once it has dried I, I left this overnight actually but if you just leave it for an hour or two to completely dry you can give it a talc and what this does it helps absorb any of the oils and stuff that are on the surface and by dusting it down like that it reduces the glare so you can actually see the texture you've got more clearly um, because if it's shiny you can't see it that clearly but uh, by moving the lamp around here you can see how the goosebumps kind of work on the neck and how the wrinkles and the pores and stuff are worked around by the ear and I've given these sort of wrinkles because the neck compresses when the head turns and stuff and the lips and the eyes and everything so I was quite pleased with how this worked out this isn't a sculpt that I'm going to mold this was just purely a, a, a texture thing uh, to show you different ways of doing textures 
These are a couple of pieces of leather I was given quite a while ago that have come in real handy for texture reference and making texture stamps. Here's a close-up of the texture and here are a couple of silicone texture stamps actually made from this stuff. Really enhances the texture and gives you a good idea of reference. This is some new smooth-on life casting silicone. Some extra I had mixed up for a casting session a few days ago. It's called Body Double Silk. It is self-releasing and I'm gonna go ahead and make a texture stamp with this stuff. like cake frosting. So here we are several minutes later and silicone is all done and we can peel it right off of here. And a nice texture, look at that. Don't look at my thumbnail, it's ugly. Now we can trim these or use them as is. Cool. You can use just about anything for a skin texture. Here I've got my Fender Champ guitar amplifier turned on its side and we're gonna work on this texture here. Look how cool that is. This is a great texture. It's similar to the other leather but a little tighter pattern. Now the life casting silicone might not be the ideal silicone to use for this. There are less expensive silicones that take longer to set up, but if you're in a hurry and you want to have something immediately and you've got some of it lying around, use a little bit. It doesn't take a lot. I'm just gonna spread this out over the side of my guitar amplifier. So I can cut up and have several different pieces of texture stamp that I can use or I can let my students use. And I'm spreading it over the amplifier case to make sure that the silicone is getting into all the little nooks and crannies of the texture and won't leave me air bubbles that I'll have to fix later on. but there's no cut and dried push button solution to doing textures anyway so there's always going to be additional stuff that you need to do as part of your sculpture so while the silicone on the amplifier case is setting up I'm going to show you this new texture stamp that we just made I'm going to press it into some monster clay and you'll see immediately what Don Lanning calls the power of the X Can you see that? Whoop, wrong way. Look at those X's. And it doesn't have to be in any particular direction. I'm, I can change the direction of the stamp. And it still fits and blends nicely. It's a real fractal nature to doing this kind of stuff because skin textures are really patterns inside of patterns inside of patterns. You see this kind of stuff in nature all the time. When you're flying in an airplane, you're going over the mountains, you can see all of the erosion patterns in the ground below. And it looks a lot like this. 
and then you can go in with your tools and enhance it even further. There's a kind of plastic wrap called Glad Press and Seal that has a really neat texture to it. We can see it here. That is a very skin-like texture to use as a, as a base stamp. Here you can actually see the Glad Press and Seal texture up against a white surface and I'm going to put some silicone on this and create a texture stamp. Though it's not a real deep texture, it'll be very subtle. And you don't have to use silicone for this either. You can use latex rubber and build up layers to get your texture stamps also. And there's so many things that you can use for texture stamps. I've used orange peels as a great texture stamp for human skin texture. Okay, well, this is all set up on the guitar amp now, so we'll peel this off while the silicone on the press and seal goes off. Ooh, look at that. That actually is a really nice texture. And my amplifier was a bit on the dirty side. It's similar to the large leather texture, only smaller. So here's this new guitar amp texture going into the monster clay. To see what it looks like. Very subtle. You can see it a little better. I've got some music going now because the silence was driving me crazy. I'm peeling off the silicone from the Glad press and seal, and we shall see what we have. Can you see it? There's the texture. So now you can see it much clearly, much more clearly in the silicone than you could on the press and seal itself. That's not too shabby.